Jesus Christ. That got tight. Hey guys, welcome to the video and welcome to the channel and welcome to the garage. What we're going to be working on today is the radiator for the Ecotech and most importantly what's going to take the most time is the plumbing going from the Ecotech to the radiator. Now as you can see I've already mounted the radiator. Um, I put it in the back, it's inside, it's at a little bit of an angle facing back. Once I decided that I was going to mount the radiator back here, what I needed to do was make sure, I wanted to leave myself enough room that if I, if the back window was out, which I think it's going to be out most of the time, I can reach my hand down in here to either work on the back of the motor, work on radiator hoses, or be able to access the coilovers. And then on the inside, I wanted to make sure that the radiator was back far enough that I can open up the electrical box, which I did. That's basically what uh, determined how far back it went, is I pushed it just far back enough that when this opens up, it just barely touches the radiator. So the radiator that I ended up going with is actually meant for a Subaru WRX. I got it off of Amazon, of all places. I'll put a link in the description so that if you wanna check it out, take a look at it, you can. Initially, I was looking at universal radiators, which there's a lot of those available, but I ended up going with the Subaru one because if I got into a pinch, if something happened, there's a lot of WRXs around here and I can go to any junkyard and grab a radiator that should be about the same size with the hookups in the same location and, and all that stuff. So I ended up going that way because I felt like it gives me a little bit of more uh, flexibility as far as local parts. But the radiator that I did get, it's meant for a Subaru WRX, but it's an aluminum aftermarket radiator. So this is the stock water neck that comes on the Ecotech, most likely. If you pull your Ecotech from a junkyard car, more than likely, this is the water neck that you're gonna have. It sticks out to the side there. It's not real convenient. With the radiator that I got and with the is install that I did, the water return is right here. So I needed to get this from here to here, and I had to do it in a uh, reliable way that could take the abuse of off-roading, and I wouldn't have to worry about anything breaking or anything like that. So this is what I came up with. This is just the radiator hose. What I did is I made this piece, which is the same bolt pattern as the stock water neck. And then I pie cut pieces to get me right back around to where I needed this little hose to go. Now I'm just showing you this so that you can see what I did here. Um, I already made this one for the water supply line that goes from the engine to the radiator right around here. We're gonna go through and build that one together. I haven't built it yet. But I wanted to show you one that I made here. These are all pie cuts, which I'll go over on the other one. I TIG welded them so that they would be waterproof. Um, and then I made this piece, this is out of 3 16 steel, and I welded the pipe to that. So the first thing I did is I went to um, auto parts stores. We've got an AutoZone and a O'Reilly Auto Parts by us. You'll walk in and you'll say, I'm looking for a radiator hose and they'll say, what make and model? Say to them, I've got a tape measure. Can I just go back and look through your stock? And I'll tell you, nobody has ever said no to me. They always say, yeah, go ahead. They don't even go back there with me. It's, it's amazing. I, I give these stores credit for that. So that's the first thing you, you, you want to do is grab, grab your tape measure, look at what size hoses you need, then go there and grab some miscellaneous pieces because that's what you're going to work off of. Then what I did, this is the outlet coming out of the engine. I took my inch and a quarter hose and I just sized it up, um, tried it on both ways, just kind of look it over, see what you've got to work with. Um, and so what I did is I decided I would go with this end. I liked the bend that it gave me. I decided where I would cut it and I cut the radiator hose right there. I did the same thing on the other side. I took this inch and a half piece. I decided where to cut it so that it would fit and whatnot. 
and then I and put it on the radiator and then kind of put it roughly where you want it to be. So when you do that, what you're doing is you're telling yourself, I need to make a steel pipe that will run from here. And then you can't see it in there, but and it's got to connect to the radiator hose, the rubber hose on the other end. So that gives you something to work from. You know you got to go from here to there, and then you can pick your path, where you're going to go, what you're going to steer clear of, and how you're going to get it there. So once you're at that point, you can then start laying out your pie cuts um, and figure out what you're going to do. Now, I made most of this out of inch and a half. I've got a lot of inch and a half laying around. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into the basement, just make a couple of pie cuts, and uh, then I can kind of come up here with a couple of different size pieces and, and start figuring out what I have to work with. And then the way I did the, this side here is I just started building from one end, tacking it together, and just kind of fabbed my way all the way to the other side. Now I want to take this piece and start making my pie cuts on it. So uh, what you need to do is you need to describe a line, a straight line, going down one edge of the pipe, the piece that you're going to be pie cutting. And then you want to scribe another line at the exact opposite. Now you can do that by measuring out the distances. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. The way that I do it is I've got a circle center finder. So once you get the uh, your scribe mark for the other side, go ahead and scribe that line. Then when you're done, you're going to have a line scribed on uh, exact opposites of the piece. So basically you've split it into two equal halves. <clears throat> now when you set this up in your bandsaw, set it up with one line sticking straight up. Set your bandsaw or whatever you're using to cut to half of the angle that you want these pie cuts to be at. So I'm making mine in 45 degree cuts. What that means is on the bandsaw, you go half of whatever you're trying to make. So I'm making a 45, so I'm actually setting my bandsaw to 22 and a half degrees. When you cut that at 22 and a half and then rotate that piece and put them together, you got 22 and a half, 22 and a half, and it comes out at a 45. If you're making, let's say, an 18 degree cut, You'll make a nine and a nine, put those together, you've got yourself your 18. All right, now that I got this cut, I can line up that line, and that is exactly how it was. And this is a 22 and a half degree cut. But now, if I rotate it and line up the lines on the other side, now all of a sudden it's a 45. And that's a perfect 45 degree angle. So that's pretty cool. A lot of versatility with that. A lot of things that you can do. Now I'm going to take this out to the garage. I'm going to take my flapper wheel on my grinder. I'm going to bevel these edges a little bit <clears throat> so that when I weld them together, I can get in there and really get some good penetration. And then, like I said before, I'm just going to start building it from one end of the radiator hose to the other.
like the first one that I showed you. It's all pie cuts, just like I showed you. If you look at this piece, you'll see, you know, this one's a 45, these are 45s. This one is not, this one's like a, a 30. All I did there is, I showed you on the video where, you know, you've got the scribe lines, and if you set them up and then rotate them 180 degrees, you've got 45 degrees. But, you know, it's pie cutting, you can get creative. So if you don't rotate them all the way or move them around, your, uh, your angles will become less. The front of the Ecotec engine is inch and a quarter. So this is all inch and a quarter pipe, but then the radiator is inch and a half. So what I did on my last bevel here, I just went from an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, and that's what got me to the radiator size. And then you can see I've got a tab that I put on here that bolts onto the intake manifold. I've got a tab here that bolts onto the chassis by the radiator to make it nice and rigid. That's it for the radiator installation. I still have to put hose clamps on everything, but I'm not going to do that until I'm really to the point where I'm going to put in antifreeze because uh, I've got a lot of work to do yet. I'm very happy with the way that everything turned out. I'm glad that I got brackets on here so that this line is really, really strong. Um, everything's solid. I'm not, I shouldn't be too worried when I'm out bouncing around on the mountain trails that any of this stuff is going to vibrate or chafe and uh, rupture out on the trails. So, so thanks for watching the video guys. I appreciate it. I hope you're learning something from it, working on your own, whatever, going out to the garage, the shop, the basement, whatever. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Take care.